we're on the cusp of 2023 and there's a ton of pastors and other men of God that are really sharing their hearts for what they feel like God has for us in 2023. For me, it really seems like the Lord keeps pulling me towards the familiar story of the woman at the well. And Jesus and his disciples stopped after a long journey at a familiar well that the locals had for generations. It was known as Jacob's Well. If you're familiar with the story of Jacob, then you'll know that his name didn't stay as Jacob. His name was eventually changed to Israel. The interesting thing about the name Jacob is that it actually means deceiver. You see, Jacob wasn't going to receive the birth birthright from his father. He used several tactics of deception to ultimately take the blessing of his older twin using deception. It wasn't until later in his life that he realized it wasn't his earthly father's blessing that he really needed in his life, but rather the blessing of God. He had to wrestle with God literally and figuratively to get his blessing. He received both a blessing and a new identity. Now, snapping forward to the woman at the well, we notice that this well isn't called Israel's well. It's called Jacob's well. For all intents and purposes, it's been a good well. It sustained many generations of people, and it sustained likely thousands upon thousands of livestock. However, there was a problem. They were tied to that well that had been created by another man really for another man while it sustained them it was always temporary what is this well in our own lives is it our church our pastor perhaps our denomination is it following after what has been taught to you through your family from generation to generation whatever it is it's not that it's all bad sustenance but many times we deceive ourselves thinking that this is where our blessing, promise, and calling is. However, in reality, Jesus is telling the woman that he has something that will sustain her eternally. Something that is specifically tailored for her. Something personal. Something that will not only bless her, but bless others while they're on their own journey. Jesus calls it the living water you know it's hard to tell in the writing if she requested access to this out of spite or as a snide remark but regardless she did ask how she can get this water and this is where so many people stop because this is where jesus says in our own lives okay let's deal with the elephant in the room he could have come off in an accusative manner. Quite honestly, he had every right to. He could have called her an adulterer and placed judgment on her, but he, that's not what he did. He didn't do that. His interest was purely addressing what was blocking her from receiving the living water from within herself. This is a lesson not just for those who are receiving of God, but those who administer the word of God to others as well. Because This is because God is not passing judgment on us. He's not picking on us. He's merely trying to remove the things that are blocking the flow of living water in our own lives. It's the difference between approaching someone with an accusation versus approaching someone in love. So what are these things that are blocking us from receiving the full blessing and life-sustaining water in our own lives? Well, the woman at the well, Jesus called out five separate men that she had been with. Perhaps she fell into a cycle believing that it was a man in her life that was going to fill the need she had. This resulting in heartbreak and then more heartbreak. Doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. The reality is, we all have something in our lives that's trying to block our access to this everlasting water. It's going to be different for everyone. It's something personal that once dealt with is going to unlock your new identity in God who made you. Now, I haven't really heard too many 
teachers or pastors quote this particular passage, I think mainly because a lot of them want to package up salvation through one or two verses for simplicity. However, in Philippians 2.12, it tells us that we need to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. So what does that mean? It's personal. For the woman at the well was her relationships. There was a young man in Matthew 19. For him, it was his possessions. The question we have to ask ourselves is, what is the elephant in the room? What is getting in our way from really being able to experience the flow of God in our lives? He's created a way for himself to show us and guide us to be able to experience his supernatural healing in our lives. Perhaps you've been digging, but you haven't gotten that breakthrough. Just keep going. Keep digging deeper. Be like Jacob, who refused to let go till he got his blessing. Above all, let's not be okay with living in our own deception anymore. We are indeed made for more, and that we each have our own portion and well through Jesus. Let me pray for y'all. Father, as we enter into this new year, let us be a people who are seeking you with our whole hearts. Uphold us with your righteous right hand and teach us our portion and provide us your healing. Not a temporary healing, but an everlasting healing. Teach us to dig deeper as we allow your words to penetrate our hearts. Help us to not be satisfied purely through others' relationship with you. Help us so that we will seek you for ourselves, that we will be changed and be able to allow God to flow into every part of our lives. We want to worship you in both spirit and and truth, so that ultimately that life-saving power can be shown to others in love. All these things in the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen.